Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, richarddwyer.co, a free site. Let's talk Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Which one do I prefer? But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. To me, it's clear that at this fork in the road where cryptocurrency is taking off altcoins, altcoins other than Bitcoin, are likely to take off um, soon. At this fork in the road, it's clear that there are two camps. There's the Bitcoin camp that believes that Bitcoin is the ultimate store of value. That's reflected in Stanley Drunkenmiller's uh, recent comments comparing Bitcoin to gold, right? Bitcoin people believe that Bitcoin is a store of value. Ethereum people believe that their cryptocurrency has more capability. If you go on Twitter, there's an Ethereum community right now that is absolutely excited, right? Ethereum, as I make this video, is up a bit. They're excited by the coming of Ethereum 2.0, by the coming or at least expected capability to have more transactions per second than Ethereum has right now. When you talk with an Ethereum person, they tell you all the things that the software, that's what cryptocurrency is, can do. You hear catchphrases like smart contracts and how this is going to obviate the need for middlemen, how this is going to streamline industries, right? How this is going to allow you to simply do more with the cryptocurrency than you could do with Bitcoin. Now, let me be clear here. I don't believe there's a comparison between the two. I believe that if you had $1 to spend and you had to pick between these two, I believe the better play is to pick Bitcoin, not Ethereum. Let me point out that utility coins like Ethereum, which you use for its smart contract capability, are subject to deflation, right? I would encourage everyone to read Jeff Booth's book, A Price for Tomorrow, right? Where he talks about deflation and he talks about technology, right? If you're using the cryptocurrency for a specific software related task the competition in the space to streamline that task as well as the technology which is improving over time to do so cheaply more efficiently will drive the price down not up so when an Ethereum person comes to you and they're talking about smart contract capability, and of course, you know, Ethereum doesn't have a monopoly on smart contract capability, right? The very things they're telling you, which they believe will increase the value of the cryptocurrency are the very things that will deflate the value of the cryptocurrency in the future, right? In a different realm, let's just talk about what happens when you're using software for a particular purpose. Right now, there's a fierce competition in the video conferencing space between Google Meet, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams. Right? These three competitors keep rolling out new features. Right, I saw where Google Meet soon is going to allow you to blur the background. Right, They're copying some of the features that are on Zoom. 
Well, just understand that that competition is going to lead to falling prices. Right? If Microsoft wants to attract you to Microsoft Teams, they're going to have to continually innovate to stay ahead of Zoom, to stay ahead of Google Meet. They're going to have to make it not more exper- uh, not more expensive for you, but less expensive for you to attract your business. Right? That's the problem with the utility coin. You're using the coin for a specific purpose. Right? Not store of value, but to do a task. And there are others in the space competing for your business. In a capitalist society, that leads to innovation and falling prices. Now, that's very different from a store of value that is based on scarcity, fungibility. In other words, my Bitcoin's the same as your Bitcoin. Right? When I give you a Bitcoin, it has a certain market value. And what I'll call status. Now, online I've noticed people keep citing Aristotle in defining money. Right? They will ask the question of whether Bitcoin is money, and they'll talk about durability, portability, divisibility, intrinsic value. Let's shake things up here a bit. Understand a store of value is different from money. Right? A painting by Picasso is a store of value. It has scarcity. Right? You understand that. Picasso's no longer with us. He's not going to paint more paintings. The painting might not be divisible. You might not be able to, you know, tear the painting in half and have both halves of the torn painting retain half the value, right? So it wouldn't satisfy Aristotle's definition of money. But if the painting continues to be scarce, is an original, and continues to appreciate in value, then you can transfer purchasing power from the present to the future. In other words, Let's say I buy the painting for investment purposes. I spend $100 today. We'll pretend you can get a Picasso for $100. I spend $100 today, and then 10 years from now, I might be able to sell that painting for $500 in real money. Right? In other words, I've been able to convert $100 today into $500 tomorrow. That's a store of value. Another store of value is land. Now here again, it doesn't meet Aristotle's definition of money because land is not portable. Right? I can't pick up my plot of real estate and transport it to New York City. Right? Some land is not divisible. Because of the uniqueness of the terrain what makes that piece of property special. But, as we all know, I can buy land today for X, and 10 years from now, that land might retain its value. Well, Bitcoin is a store of value. The value is not dependent upon Bitcoin's capability to perform certain tasks, like run smart contracts, 
understand smart contract capability, and I know it's counterintuitive, actually decreases the value of the cryptocurrency over time when the expectation of the buyer of that cryptocurrency is to use that cryptocurrency to have smart contract capability because that opens the door to a vulnerability, right? As technology increases, the smart contract capability of cryptocurrencies is likely to increase. That will diminish the value of the current model of that smart contract cryptocurrency that you have. So right now, you have Gavin Wood, a name you need to remember, who helped create Ethereum, right? This is one of Ethereum's creators. Understand, Gavin Wood has continued to innovate, and he has moved on from Ethereum, and he's now involved with Polkadot. Worse yet, he's also involved with Kusama. Both of these are in the top 50 in market cap in all of crypto. Top 50. So what you have is someone who helped create Ethereum smart contract capability continuing to innovate. And of course, coming up with other coins that now compete with Ethereum. Well, if the value of Ethereum arises from its smart contract capability, then how do we know at any point in time whether Ethereum's smart contract capability has any kind of competitive edge over competitors like Polkadot and Kusama, given that some of the same people who created Ethereum have moved on to these other coins? So the portion of Ethereum that gets its value from its smart contract capability is vulnerable. Worse yet, it's subject to not appreciation, but deflationary forces. Right now, with regard to Bitcoin, Understand, people just buy Bitcoin as a store of value. Let's not confuse the issue by talking about the use of Bitcoin as a currency. To me, that's as foolhardy as talking about the use of gold as a currency. Right? Understand, just like gold is a store of value, in fact, people in the precious metal space will say, hey, you need to have some silver. So if the economic apocalypse hits and we have a greater depression, you're able to go to the store with silver and actually conduct transactions. But understand, that doesn't change the fact that gold is an excellent store of value. Right? The reason why you'd want silver is a small gold coin would be worth over $1,900. How do you buy a loaf of bread with that? How do you know the merchant's going to be able to make change? Well, understand with Bitcoin, you would purchase it as a store of value. It has a better chance of retaining value than Ethereum. Because its status as a store of value is not dependent upon its smart contract capability. In other words, you're just relying on the network of Bitcoin, which far exceeds any other network in crypto, right? The hash rate of Bitcoin the existence of Bitcoin, your ability to transfer Bitcoin to 
another individual. And of course, the fact that Bitcoin is divisible, right? You're not relying on its capabilities to do tasks as a software. So let me just say, as advanced as Google Meet, Zoom, and Microsoft Teams are, understand the competition among them in terms of software capability is so fierce that you can use each service for free under certain conditions, right? Each is trying to get an edge. Competition drives down the price. Right? The reason why Ethereum is upgrading to Ethereum 2.0 is because its programming language, Solidity, is now antiquated. It can't compete with the cryptos that are out there today, some of which were designed in part by people who helped design Ethereum. So when you're in a cryptocurrency like Ethereum that needs to upgrade itself to continually meet the demands of the market, then you're not in a store of value on par with gold or Bitcoin. Right? Understand, Bitcoin doesn't have to come out with Bitcoin 2.0 to add new capabilities to improve itself as a store of value. You're talking about the dominant cryptocurrency in terms of market cap, right? There's no Cardano trying to compete with it by offering new capabilities. I know you've had forks. I know Bitcoin Cash fancies itself as a transactional coin, right? You have Bitcoin SV, okay, fair enough. But understand, those are different markets than Bitcoin, right? The original is still the best because it has the highest hash rate it's the hardest to hack. It has the biggest name recognition. Its name recognition is so big, its competitors decided to use Bitcoin in their names. Right? And understand, it fulfills a different role than Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin is just a store of value. It's just like gold. You're holding gold not to go down to the store to buy the loaf of bread. For that, you'd use silver or fiat currency. You're holding gold as a store of value. Well, as Stanley Druckenmiller has pointed out, Bitcoin is much more portable, much more convenient, low cost in terms of storage costs than gold. You don't have the custody issues. I don't have to hire a third party or buy a safe Right? You know, bury a safe in my backyard to store Bitcoin. So, I, for me, and I know people disagree, but to me, the very existence of someone like Gavin Wood, who can move on from Ethereum, start competing cryptocurrencies, that in some ways are superior in terms of facilitating smart contracts than Ethereum. Their very existence undermines the idea of Ethereum being a better store of value than Bitcoin. It's not close. Right? If someone came up to you and said, hey, I support gold as a store of value. And another person came over and said, you know, I support 
video conferencing software as a store of value? Which one would you decide to invest in if your goal was to have a store of value? Certainly not video conferencing, given the fact that, again, if you have the software to do a certain task, right, for a certain use case, and that use case can be improved upon, over time, well, that's deflationary. The video conferencing people simply cannot compete with gold. Right? Understand, gold might be too clunky to use in everyday transactions. Good luck using gold to buy a cup of coffee at a Starbucks at the drive through window. It's not going to happen. I agree, Bitcoin is a little bit clunky. The transaction time doesn't lend itself to buying a cup of coffee at a Starbucks. I'll agree with that. But like gold, Bitcoin is an excellent store of value. You don't need more capabilities with Bitcoin for it to be a great store of value. Bitcoin is not trying to be transactional like Bitcoin Cash. The point is that Bitcoin is not cash. Bitcoin is a store of value. Bitcoin doesn't have to satisfy Aristotle's rules for money. Sorry, Peter Schiff, it doesn't have to. Just like a diamond, a painting, a nice parcel of land doesn't have to meet Aristotle's definition of money to be a store of value. So count me among those who believes it's not close, right? The network effect you're getting with Bitcoin, the fact that Paul Tudor Jones, Raul Paul, Stanley Drunkenmiller are talking about Bitcoin as an investment, right? Understand, institutions are far closer to investing in Bitcoin than they are Ethereum, right? It's the very uses of Ethereum as a way to take advantage of digital smart contract capability that undercut its ability as a store of value. Right? You need Ethereum 2.0 because Ethereum 1.0 can no longer hang in the real world in terms of smart contract capability. You'll never be able to say that about Bitcoin in terms of its role as a store of value. Bitcoin is a great store of value today. As Stanley Druckenmiller has indicated, he believes it's perhaps better than gold as a store of value, right? It's an excellent store of value today. It doesn't have to change to be an excellent store of value tomorrow, right? As with gold, you don't buy Bitcoin to do everyday transactions. You buy it to be a store of value. And as a store of value, Ethereum simply is not close. I know many disagree with me. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I'm going to post it at youtube.com slash DWYER 70905. Thanks for stopping by.